Hey everybody, welcome back. This is going to be the hopefully the third and final video in my how to make a spice rack in Fusion 360. We've only got a few things to do here. We are going to put in some reinforced mounting holes should we want to mount it to the wall. We're going to clean some, round some edges up and we're going to put some lettering in so we know what spice goes in what spot. But first, before I go any further, I don't like the height. I want to, I just think it doesn't look symmetrical. It doesn't, this doesn't need to come up as high as this in here, but to look right, I think it does. Now, from our previous video, I know that this distance is 97, and I know that this distance is 57. So I need to add 40 millimeters to my height, I think, to get the look that I'm going for. So I'm going to come back to that extrusion. That is this extrusion here down in our history, our timeline. I'm going to click Edit Feature. I just made it 200 when I started this as an arbitrary number. I'm going to add, make it 240. Um, there we go. So I know it looks stupid now, but I think it's going to be okay. So let's put our reinforced screw holes in. And before I begin, let me tell you that Fusion 360 does have a hole tool. It is really good when you're making numerous or complex holes. I am... Um, I have had less than stellar luck with it because it just seems to not ever do exactly what I want. And this is a stupid simple thing we're doing here. So I'm just going to stick with circles and chamfers. So I'm going to add some lines in first so I can locate my holes. Hit L for whoops. I have to create a sketch first, don't I? Create a sketch on this back surface. L for line. And I am just going, let me tip it so I can see my hole. There we go. I, am, I want to put my holes right in between the two bottles. So I want to lock in top and bottom, although it really doesn't matter. And I want to make it 90 degrees. The only thing I don't want to do is lock the dimension in that I want to be able to change. So let's make another one. And it doesn't matter where I put it as long as it's not locked in from side to side. And let's put a third one in and we're right about there. And we just want to make sure this one's zero degrees. And they're all blue, so I can change them. I could bring that one up and lock it there. I can drag them around. Notice how they bifurcate my geometry. I do not want that. So at some point, I'm going to make these construction lines. But um, let's locate them first. So D for dimension. I'm going to click on this line. And what do I? how do I know what dimension I want? Whoops, missed it. There we go. I want to be right in the middle of the gap between the two bottles. So I have two three millimeter, I have a three millimeter wall, a 48 millimeter hole, which is 51. And I have half of another three millimeter wall. So I'm 52 and a half. So I'm going to type 52.5, enter. And now I'm going to dimension, tip it a little bit. I'm going to dimension this one to here. And again, 52.5, enter. And now I want to dimension this top one. And I actually kind of like where it is. Let's see what it's at now. It's at 24 now. So let's even it off. 25. Let's make sure we satisfy our OCD. 25. Okay, I'm good with all that. So let's hit escape to get rid of our dimension tool. Let's turn them into construction lines because I don't want them bifurcating my geometry that way. So we are going to click on one. We're going to hold down control. And we're going to click on the other two and then we're going to come over here to our sketch palette and we're going to click on the construction box and that will change my lines in the construction lines now they don't bifurcate my geometry they're just there to help me locate my holes so i'm going to hit c for hole center diameter circle not c for hole h is hole but we're going to use circles here and i am going to draw a 10 millimeter hole 10 millimeter circle not hole stop that chuck 10 millimeter hole, enter and enter, and I'm going to do the same thing over here. Lock it into my two construction line where they cross, and 10, enter and enter. Let's zoom in so I can see them a little better. Now I'm going to draw two more circles. C for circle. Am I going to do that, or am I going to do the other one first? You know what? Let's, let's extrude these out. I'm going to hit escape to get rid of my circle tool. I'm going to hit E to extrude. I'm going to click on both of these, and I'm going to come out three millimeters and enter. All right. 
there is my reinforcement for my holes. So now what I need to do is I need to sketch on this surface and I can probably do them both in the same sketch. I'm going to hit C for circle. I'm going to, it'll still lock into the center for me. And I'm going to come out and I'm going to make these four. Enter and enter. And let's see if it'll let me do both at the same time. It might not. I may have to do them separate. I can't remember. I've done this before. And I see it won't let me lock in there. So I'm going to do them separate just to make sure they look pretty. And I'm going to hit E for extrude. I'm going to click on this. And I'm going to extrude it back. And I know this is going to be 6 millimeters. So I'm just going to type in 6 millimeters. Oops, minus 6. And OK. And while I'm here, I don't need to do it. Let's go over this one. So let's say create sketch. We're going to create it on this surface. We're going to hit C for circle. We're going to go there. We're going to say 4 millimeters. Enter and enter and E to extrude, click it. Let's go back to tell it it's a cut. And we know we want to go six millimeters, six millimeters, enter. All right, now let's chamfer and fillet them. So let's say F for fillet. Let's click this. I think I uh, let's try one, one's not enough. Let's try two, two looks good. I could go three, but that would give me no flat area on the walls at all. Oh, I want to do both of them. So let's cancel it and let's go back and say fill it again. And we want to do both of these, that one and that one. And we're going to say two and enter. And now let's go to chamfer. So modify and chamfer. And we're going to click. Let's zoom in a little bit. We're going to click there and there. And let's say two again, let's see what two looks like. And won't let me do two. Won't let me do two. Really? Try one. There we go. That looks good. Okay. All right. So there are my two reinforced screw holes. They are reinforced. They're chamfered slightly for a, a chamfered screw head, tapered screw head, and we're happy with that. So let's put ourselves in some text. And to do that, let's we're going to say sketch, create a sketch. We're going to create a sketch on this surface. I'm going to have to do this in two steps. And we are going to sketch text. And we're going to place it. Don't lock it in because we're going to want to move it. So make sure when you see it lock in, stay away from there. Click. And it's going to ask us what we want to type. And my upper row is going to be KS. For, for um, kosher salt, BP for black pepper, GA for garlic, and CU for curry. And I'm going to have two CUs. I, I guess I could get around by putting three letters in, but I think I can figure out the two CUs, curry and cumin. Although I maybe, maybe I should make cumin KU just for sport and amusement, but no, we won't do that. So let's change the... Let's change the font type. I don't want Arial. Uh, I have one I like that prints really well for me, and it's called Georgia. And I want to keep this fairly simple. And I'm going to make this, let's try 14. See if 14 is too big. And now 14 looks like it'll be good. Let's tip this because I want to make these. I'm not going to worry about locating these perfect. I'm not that OCD. Um, and now let's just do some spaces out. I've got one. Let's try one, two, three, four, five, six. Not enough. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, ten looks like it might work. Okay, I can't seem to click in between there. There we go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, that works for me. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've either had too much coffee or not enough. One of the two. I don't know which. Uh, you know what? I think I could move this a little bit this way, maybe. Remember that I've. I'm, let's see. Let's see what our view is up here. Ortho. Can I see it changed on me again? Perspective with ortho faces. Yeah, you see. It tries to make it look so that you're looking at it dead on, and it takes the 3D look away from you. 
I actually like that. I think that's going to be good. So I'm going to say OK. Now I am going to hit E to extrude. I should only have to click on one of my letters. And I'm going to say one millimeter and OK. And there's my letters for the top row. Let's go down to my bottom row and let's click create a sketch on this surface and get it back here for us. And let's say sketch text. And we're going to make sure we don't lock it in. And we are going to change the font type to Georgia. Georgia, I am not going to sing. You cannot make me sing. And I'm <laughs> going to change the height to 14 millimeters. Whoops, 14. And we are going to make the text. This is going to be time, so TH and BP for. Wait a minute. No, that's not BP. That's RP for red pepper. Then GI for ginger and CU for cumin. Okay. And let's tip our model so we can kind of see the holes. And we're going to go there. And we are going to space it out now. So we're doing 10. We are at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And my gosh, that looks really good. I'm very happy with that. Uh, I might, let's see if I can, whoops, let's see if I can tip my model slightly. Eh, you know what? I'm good with that. Let's say OK. And let's zoom in a bit. Let's hit E to extrude. Let's click on any one of my letters and one millimeter. And OK. All right, there's my lettering. That wasn't too bad at all, was it? So the only thing I really want to do is I really want to look at putting a, a fillet on this edge up here and taper that back. So we've been 12 minutes. I'm doing perfect. I'm really happy. So let's say modify and fill it. And I want to pick this little edge there and this little edge there. Now let's zoom back out so we can watch what's going on. And let's go right about there. Let's say OK. And I think that's it. I think that's our spice rack right there. I am going to get this over into Cura. And if you guys haven't seen it, there is a beta version of Cura 4.0. I have downloaded it and looked at it, and they have rearranged the interface considerably. I have, I'm not going to make any early predictions because you know how it is when you go in your favorite store and they move everything around. It might be better in the long run, but for the short term, you hate it because you can't find anything. And uh, that's kind of how I'm feeling about Cura 4.0 for the moment. So that being said, another thing I was thinking about doing and I think I've done it in a previous video, but I can't remember, was if you're not sure of this distance down here to this bevel, you can move this whole thing over in the mesh mixer and you can cut a chunk of this out and just print a chunk of it. And I say, I think I did it in an earlier video. I'm pretty sure of my dimensions here, so I'm not too concerned about it. So yeah, that's it. I am going to go ahead and print this and I'll probably tack a little... 30 second video on the end of here to show you it printed. And that's it for now. If you enjoyed this video, if you've learned something, please like and subscribe. I have some affiliate links down below. They don't cost you anything and they help me out quite a bit. And uh, check back with me next time. I'll have something new. I've got some ideas for several new things and my wife came up with a really good idea to help me out. And um, we'll make those things and we'll have a lot of fun doing it. Talk to you later. Bye for now.